Hey everyone, this is Tapan Sharma here and in this video, we will be looking at how we can upgrade our Laravel app from version 9 to the latest version that is the version 10 and as you can see this project so i have a project called auth implementation so this project is currently running on version 9.19 so we'll be upgrading this to version 10 by looking at the docs and performing the upgrade step by step and i also want to give you an overview of this project so this project is basically the auth implementation for the svelte inertia so i actually implemented the breeze package for the svelte version and i'm also working on a package for it so just like you install the react and view version of the breeze uh, you can install the svelte version and it is almost complete but uh, since uh, laravel 10 uh, recently released so I'm working on the version 10 compatibility for the package. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to create a dedicated video for that as well. So let's talk about the upgrade part here. So in my browser, so as you can see, the project is actually working and is in a good condition. So this works fine. And let me also log in. So that's actually the breeze implementation but there are some extra things that i'm experimenting with so this version this project is working fine so let's go ahead and open the laravel docs and then we will work on the upgrade guide so let's go to the laravel.com click on documentation and let's search for upgrade so inside prologue there's upgrade guide and here we have the documentation to upgrade version 9 to 10 so the high impact changes are the dependencies and minimal stability and we'll look into these one by one so the dependencies so we need php 8.1 for laravel 10 and if we go ahead and check check out my system then i have i guess php 8.2 installed so if you don't have that go ahead and upgrade your php first and we also need composer 2.2 or higher so for that we can type in composer and as you can see i have 2.5.1 so that's also fine so you need to if you are on windows or, or other platforms then you might need to uninstall and reinstall it or i think there's a command to update it okay there's a self self update command so you can use this to update your composer and the next thing is to upgrade the dependencies so we need to upgrade the laravel framework itself and sparty laravel ignition so let's go ahead and do that so in my composer.json i'm going to replace the 9 version to version 10.0 and the laravel ignition to version 2.0 so which is inside require dev so instead of 1.0 you can do 2.0 and so far if you are using php unit so we also need to upgrade that so let me just zoom in zoom in a bit so that you can see it properly so inside php unit.xml we have coverage attribute so we need to remove that so as you can see it says that inside coverage we have to remove the process unco uncovered files attribute so this is the attribute we need to remove so i'll just remove that and so we also need to upgrade the dependencies and in this case it's going to be in the collision and the php unit so the collision is 7.0 and php unit is going to be 10.0 so let's go ahead and do that so this is going to be 7.0 and php unit is going to be 10.0 so let's remove everything let's save that and we have to also examine whether any other third party packages that are consumed by us are compatible with laravel 10 or not so only if they are compatible then we can upgrade them otherwise uh, the composer is gonna throw an error so you need to check that and only then upgrade the laravel version so don't rush to upgrade it right now uh, wait a few weeks and when the package maintainers provide support for laravel 10 then you can upgrade your application so that's done and the minimum stability is should be stable now so in our composer.json we have prefer stable okay minimum stability is going to be stable so if you have anything else then you do and then you need to update that as well and okay the application so if uh, you are using a custom public path so in case if you need that and then instead of binding that to the path.public in our country container what we need to do is we need to use this function you should instead update your code to invoke the use public path method offered by so the path that is offered by this class needs to be used 
so that's one of the application level changes and the authorization uh, so we have some changes in the authorization section as well so the register policy method is going to be called by default by the framework so if you have made any calls to these manually then you can remove them so in my case i haven't done anything so i'm gonna ignore that and if you are also using the redis cache tags then you have to update them as well so this is also quite simple and about the database expressions so for using db raw if you are using db raw then there are some uh, changes as well so what this says is so if you are manually casting the database expressions to either strings or to string method then you need to update your code by calling the get value method instead so that's one of the changes that also needs to be kept in mind if you are using it and i think uh, this is also a kind of uh, low impact change so query exception constructor so the eliminate database query exception constructor constructor now accepts a string connection name it's in, in its first argument and in case if our if your application is manually throwing this exception then you need to update the code accordingly and the other one is the ulid column so if in case you are using the ulid in your migrations then by default if you are passing this then it's uh, the column is going to be named ulid and if you want some other names then you can pass in a string value to the function and that's going to be used and this is something that is generally used in our application so the casting so previously we used to have a dates property in our models uh, which uh, used to cast the dates uh, from the database to the proper uh, to the carbon instances so instead of these days properties what we need to do is we need to use the cast property and then pass in the strings uh, or the columns that we want to cast to dates or date times so there's another one called relation get base query method so this is also kind of uh, very low impact so this is gen uh, generally not used in most of the applications like it is used internally but we don't uh, generally customize these things so there's a get, a get base query method inside the relations class and now it is actually renamed to two base so that's a very low impact change and by default the localization are now hidden from the app so most of the time these are not actually used so inside okay it's in the root directory actually so if you are using translations then only then uh, you can publish them otherwise you can remove these so that's one of uh, a really good change and logging so if you are using uh, logging so there are some changes to that and so monologue dependency has been updated so for that you need to check out the upgrade guide so in this case i haven't done anything with this so i'm not gonna do that and okay if you are using queues and using the bus dispatch now method so that has been now changed to dispatch sync and dispatch sync so instead of now it is changed to sync so that's also one of the low impact changes and in the routing so the route middleware property has been renamed to middleware aliases so it won't have any other side effects if you don't rename it but for future updates it's going to be helpful so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to rename that to route middleware okay so route middleware instead of route middleware i'm going to use middleware aliases and this is going to work as usual and okay rate rim limiter return values so if you are using rate limiters then there's a slight change so it is now going to return the value that is passed in to this function so you can check that out it's pretty simple and there was a deprecated redirect home method so now this has been completely removed and if you want to use uh, or if you want to call that home route then you have to call it explicitly by defining by calling its calling that route via its name so in this case redirect route home and for testing there are some changes so if you are using testing and testing and mocking services then you you need to make these changes so i think uh, there are only some function changes so mocks application has been renamed from the framework so by default the mocks application service provided these expects events expect jobs and expect notifications classes or methods instead of these what we need to use is now we need to use event fake bus fake and notification fake respectively so inside the validation as well so, so there are some changes so these validations were actually i think um, introduced in laravel version 9 
So if you are using the typical validation classes, then you don't have to change anything. But if there's a, if you are using these uh, methods for the validation, then if there are more than one uh, errors, then it is going to be appended to an array. So that's something that is mentioned in here. And that's also a kind of uh, impact, very low impact change. So that's uh, all the stuff that we need to update. And if you want to also want to upgrade the core files, like uh, in this case, the kernel.php and uh, update all these uh, files since they are not updated by default since they are configurable so for that case what we can do is we can actually check out the comparison tool and see what are the stuff that are updated like in this case the in the kernel class class these voids are return types are added so it's not necessary to include these but it's a good uh, thing to also update these core files so it might take some time but uh, don't do it all at once uh, do it step by step and there's also a tool uh, called Laravel Shift. So it's not uh, affiliated or partnered or anything. I'm just uh, giving you information that there's a tool uh, like uh, Laravel Shift. So you can use the this tool to upgrade uh, your application. So it's kind of an automation tool and it charges a certain amount to upgrade your application. So you can use this tool as well. So the last thing that we need to uh, need to do is run composer update let's go ahead and do that so while this is upgrading what i also want to tell you is that the welcome page has also been updated so let me just first go ahead and update it and then i can run php arts and serve and this should work now so let's go ahead and reload so let's check out okay so the update has been performed successfully and as you can see our application is now working fine and the welcome.blade has been also has also been updated and as you can see we have the laravel version 10 so you can actually copy this welcome.blade from the original repo and paste that in here so if you are using that file so in that case you need to do that otherwise you can just ignore that as well so we are done actually so we have successfully upgraded our laravel project to the latest version so that's it for this video and i hope you learned how to upgrade your laravel project and i do have some plans uh, about uh, inertia and svelte so i'm gonna release some videos around that as well so that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one